And welcome back to Friday Night Lights Championship Weekend Show. Now we go from the thrill of victory to the agony of defeat. Yeah, yeah. Now last weekend, the eight-man football finals was at the Superior Dome, and the Merrill Vandals were only in their third season in eight-man football, and they made it all the way to the finals where they faced off against Martin High School. The Vandals, they made it to those eight-man finals after a huge comeback performance against Musining, where they fought through the elements and managed to win 22-20 to to punch their ticket to the Superior Dome. Now in the eight-man state championship game, Merrill unfortunately was unable to stop Martin High School and would come up just short of winning that title. Even still, this season has been a massive accomplishment for the Vandals. Merrill in their school's history have never made it to a finals game in either 11-man or 8-man football. And not only that, it's the first time in 20 years that they finished with a regular season record of no losses on their record. Now the guys can say it, the biggest thing for them that helped them accomplish all of this was their bond that they all shared as a team. The leadership we had on this team, we had a lot of seniors. Again, a lot of that team that played last year for us, they came back with that leadership role, and they really bought into the leadership. And uh, the great bond that we had with these players, and the coaches as well as the players together. Most of us have played together since fourth, fifth grade. We've been together for a long time. And then team camp every year, everyone gets to know each other. Again, even though I mean we've been together for nine years, 10 years, even more. So it's just, yeah, everyone's got a good bond with each other. Yeah, and the entire Merrill community really rallied behind these guys heading to the finals this week past weekend. The team took part in a parade around town and also received a hero's welcome when they got to the team hotel before the game. For these guys, the success that they had at Merrill is one thing, but it meant even more to see the whole town support the Vandals on this run. Well, it was awesome. Yeah. They, they've been with us since day one. Then at the finals, we had a lot of people there. It was just awesome. It was like a movie. We <laughs> looking out the bus and watching everyone cheer you on as we're leaving to go up north. It was just one of the coolest feelings ever. Everyone came out, showed up. There was a bunch of people there in the stands supporting us, and just an awesome feeling. Our stadium was packed for most of the playoffs, most of the season. We've had record attendance. It's just been amazing. The community has been a big part of helping us get to where we were. The Vandals, they're definitely going to remember this year, both for the perfect regular season and just for the fact that they are first ever state title game performance. It's just a great year for them all around. Yeah, great season for Merrill, no question about it. Well, this next school is no stranger to titles. The New Oath of Hornets won a regional title and then came up short of their goal to reach Ford Field as they were stopped in a Division 7 semis by Traverse City St. Francis. The Hornets played in a very competitive Mid-Michigan Activities Conference this season, the league sending four of its seven schools to the playoffs, with three of them winning at least one postseason game. The school that didn't win was Duran, who put together an undefeated regular season before bowing out in a tough draw against defending D5 state champ Lansing Catholic. Now, the Lota benefited from playing the bigger schools in their league, and when it came time to playoffs, well, the Hornets rolled up their sleeves and rolled their way to the semis with wins over Bendel, Wamba Westphalia, and Laker High School. And when it came time for his postgame talk following the loss to TCSF, Head coach Clint Galvis just had a tough time saying goodbye to some great seniors. With the experience you'll have forever and the experiences that you had, think about how long, especially you seniors, how long you seniors been just grouped together and playing together. It, it, it's tough because I love every one of you guys, this group of seniors, fellas. I love that all we had all these young guys come up because these freaking seniors, man, uh, you know, and, uh, and if I say this, you might hear this old cliche, but there's these 13 seniors freaking showed you how it's done. They showed you the work that needs to be put in. The best freaking example and the best character group of seniors I think I've ever coached. And that's the honest to God truth. It means a lot. I mean, like I said, I, you get close with all your teams, but these 13 guys, man, it's, it literally is the highest character kids that I've ever coached. And, um, you know, I, I love every one of them, and uh, and that's what's sad, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna miss these guys. So, um, yeah, it's tough. It's not easy any time a season's over, but this group in particular was pretty special. You know, I think we we didn't get our ultimate goal, but we did a lot of good things this year. It means a lot. Just our big group of seniors. We just had a great time. We were all. A, it was just a great brotherhood. 
No doubt about the Hornets and Coach Gal was simply one of the best. And the new look the program has been so dominant for so many years. Not too long ago, uh, the Hornets had a 61 game regular season winning streak. So uh, you know that they have been just absolutely fantastic. Impressive as heck. And yeah, Clint Galvis, just an outstanding coach. You can just see the emotion in his face with his team. But coming up on the FNL Championship Weekend Show, we're going to take a trip down memory lane and talk about a pair of former NFL players from Saginaw. But on deck, we'll talk postseason awards and check in with former. Davison State Champion quarterback Brennan Sullivan. But first, here are some crazy kids from New Lothrop. The Davidson cheer team welcoming us back here on the Friday Night Lights Championship Weekend Show. And those Cardinals have had a lot to cheer about in recent years. And that's because Davidson High School has had a lot of recent success. Yes, now this year they won a Saginaw Valley League title. Back in 2020, they made it to Ford Field for the second year in a row. In 2019, they won a state championship for the first time ever. And that state title was won with the help of quarterback Brendan Sullivan, who just this year made his debut in the Big Ten. Brendan Sullivan was the star quarterback at Davison High School who helped lead the Cardinals to their first ever state championship in 2019. Since that moment, Brendan has made the jump to college ball, and this season he can now say he's been the starting quarterback for a Big Ten football team. Brendan's head coach from Davison, Jake Weingart, said seeing him on TV playing in the Big Ten has been quite special. It's surreal, you know, just watching it at home, you, you know, you get the starting lineups pop up, and there's his face, you know, from Davison, Michigan. So I think. I think that's, you know, I remember the first time I saw it, it was, holy crap, this is real. Sullivan enrolled at Northwestern University to join the Wildcats football team back in 2021. He was slated to be the backup behind junior Ryan Helinski. In week six, Helinski suffered an injury during the game against Wisconsin. So with Helinski out, Brendan took the field for his first game in the Big Ten. I mean, it was my first time getting hit that game in two years. So just absorbing everything that I could, being like a sponge of, you know, where my eyes need to be during pre-snap, post-snap, um, identifying coverage, identifying fronts, just every little thing 
matters. After that game, Brennan became the head quarterback while Halinski recovered from his injury. In five games as a redshirt freshman, Sullivan has thrown for 589 yards and six total touchdowns. Coach Weingart's talked about seeing Brennan's journey from high school to the Big Ten. You see him do a lot of the same things that he was doing here. Um, just his, his physical maturation. You know, he's, he's obviously built his body up, put a lot of weight on, became bigger, faster, stronger. This has been Brendan's first taste of Big Ten football, and he knows he wants more. However, he said he wouldn't be the player or man that he is right now if it wasn't for Davison High School in his four seasons with the Cardinals. What was best about being at Davison is I grew as a man more than anything. Um, and Coach Jake and, and then my dad really mentored me into doing that. And I think that's something that goes a long way when you – our Davidson Cardinal football player, you develop as a man to develop you off the field as much as, much as on the field. You can have all the talent in the world, which he does, uh, but his, his work ethic is something that, that I think, you know, really puts him in a position where, you know, the sky's the limit and I, I wouldn't put past seeing him play on, on Sundays. Yeah, Scott, even in a small mm. sample size, Brendan's shown a ton of capabilities that he could lead that Northwestern offense in the future. So in the coming years, he'll continue to develop. I'm sure that Brendan could do some great things at Northwestern. And like you said, maybe even in the uh, NFL. Well, when the season starts to wind down, the awards start to ramp up. All conference, all state teams are being named, and several organizations are handing out their county awards as well. In Genesee County, the Player of the Year Award is back after a COVID hiatus. As a matter of fact, there was no award given during Sullivan's senior season, and there's a great chance that he would have oh, been yeah. uh, the winner of that award at that time. Now, the award is given out by the unit Midwest Recruiting. It's an organization that is run by Genesee County native Joe Tramble. Genesee County has a lot of the top talent, and as you see, we usually have a team that's usually ranked in the top 10 in the state. And with those athletes, you want to make sure those athletes get recognized. You want to make sure that they, they leave a, a, a history here as far as their production that they did on the gridiron here in Genesee County. So I always just love to see the idea of those kids being rewarded. A list of 10 semifinal names will be trimmed to five finalists. Linden's Bryce Elick, Swords Creek's Jacob Booth are two of the top prospects in the state. They're joined by a pair of Grand Blank stars in Tay Boyd and Owen Sishambara. Hammonies Delano Townsend and his teammate Deshaun Douglas are also up for the award. Deshaun, he runs with a... Uh, very quick, uh, low gravity to the ground. Um, he gets through holes very smooth, got uh, breakaway speed, and obviously you saw he was missing everything for um, the Hammity Hawks this year. Carmen Ainsworth Cavaliers, Nigel Johnson and Terrence Wallace are on the list, along with a pair of Davison Cardinals, a running back Jalen Flowers and quarterback Braylon Himmeline. Obviously, you know, you're talking about a big, strong quarterback with a big, strong arm. Uh, he looked very confident uh, sitting in the pocket. Um, he made some of the uh, greatest, uh, biggest uh, throws in some of the uh, games that I saw this year. Obviously, we all got a chance to see him in the, uh, what they like to call the revenge tour, where you see, uh, hey, they just kind of annihilated some of the teams around in the area. Jalen Flowers. Okay, now you're talking about man's man of man, a powerful kid, one of the strongest running back that you have seen. He's very quick, he's very elusive. Um, I got a chance to catch Davidson Elise uh, three times this year and watch uh, just, man, he makes some of the, the smoothest, quickest cuts. Once he gets up the field, um, he has that breakaway speed. The unit Midwest Recruiting will also be naming top position awards that is open to all classes. The Player of the Year Award will be announced during a ceremony at 6 o'clock on December 18th at Swartz Creek High School. And while the Genesee County Player of the Year Award will be named later in the month of December, Saginaw County's Hawkins Award will be awarded a week from today. Yeah, and this year's finalists, we got some pretty big names. In fact, Scott, we got Gabe Blanchard from Freeland High School, Khalil Brown from Birch Run, and Evan Wakefield from ML Seminary. All three are incredible athletes and well-deserving of an award that is as special as the Hawkins Award. Since 2019, the Hawkins Award has been a Heisman-like accolade given out to the top senior football player in Saginaw County. On December 1st, one of three finalists will become the fourth recipient of this award, named after the first ever All-American from Saginaw County, Harry Hawkins. We had several nominations, and these are the three best football players in Saginaw County. So you figure 17 high schools and probably about four or 500 players. These are the best football players from Saginaw County. First up in the running is quarterback Evan Wakefield from Michigan Lutheran Seminary. Wakefield in his senior year helped lead the Cardinals to their first playoff win since 2016. For him, just being nominated was a big surprise. I honestly didn't know uh, too much about it. And then uh, my coach said he was nominating me for something. And then 
uh, it turned out to be a finalist. I was like very surprised. Um, very great for the opportunity. Next is Khalil Brown from the Birch Run Panthers. Brown has shined on both sides of the ball as a running back on offense and as a linebacker on defense. Throughout his four years at Birch Run, he feels that things had only gotten better for himself and his teammates as time went along. My freshman and sophomore year, our school was having a losing record, 0-9 and 1-9. And and so when our new coach came, it just really helped me a lot, and I'm really proud of my senior season. Rounding out the field is Gabe Blanchard from the Freeland Falcons. Blanchard is an offensive lineman, a position that doesn't tend to receive tons of recognition or accolades. Gabe is proud to be an exception to that and is excited to represent his position and school. I think it's awesome. I think it shows people that you don't have to be one of the pretty boys, that you can go out there and be all over the news, and you can still come out here and show great leadership. The Hawkins Award presentation will be held on Thursday, December 1st at the Saginaw Club. A social hour begins at 6 p.m. and the award presentation starts at 7 p.m. The cost to attend is $20 and tickets are still available. The Saginaw County Sports Hall of Fame is a big sponsor of the Hawkins Award along with our good friends at MLive. So, Scott, I mean, like right now, you got to make a choice. Who's your choice? Well, uh, that's going to be kind of a tough one. You know, Wakefield's so electric on the field, and who doesn't like, uh, you know, a lineman, of course. Right. You know, he's not the pretty boy out there as he likes to sit there and he say. Looks good so, amazing. yeah, he look, he's, he's a good looking guy. What are you <laughs> talking about here? All offensive linemen are handsome, but at the same time, you know, he does all the dirty work. But Brown is a great, smart player. Uh, him stealing that ball and scoring on Frank Booth is going to be a highlight that, that I will never forget. It was just awesome. So, yeah, I'm not going to pick, but ah. I sit there and say that uh, they got some three good people out there for that award. All right, and coming up, are you looking for some part-time work? Then we got a job for you. But first, we're going to check out the inductees for our Saginaw County Hall Sports Hall of Fame class. It was loaded with some high school football talent. But first, let's listen in on the Standish Sterling Panthers huddle. Second half, boys, here we go. Hey, stay where you belong. Understand me? A lot of effort. Protect yourselves. Here we go, family. One, two, three, family.